Good day, it's me, Paul Trinidad. Just wanted to talk to you quickly about this week's drawing class. The main point that we're after is this interchange between schematic memory and real memory. So it's really important that you understand that the schematic memory is the memories from your childhood or memories from when you've had memory blocks or blocks in your drawing. There are cutoff points at which you can't achieve anymore, so you embed a finished link in your mind about where you can draw, what you can draw. So instead of observing what it is that you're drawing, you go to your schematic memory to pull out what does an eye look like, what does a hand look like. You'll experience a block, and after you've had that block, it's very, very difficult to continue on. You kind of lose your confidence. So the exercises today and the exercises which Andy has got you doing uh, to help you unblock that. Once you can unblock your schematic memory and go beyond it, start to explore what you actually really see and understand the differences between recording what you see even if you don't look at it. Getting your brain to actually see uh, what it is that you're observing and get your hand to record it. Um, the most important part about this lesson that I think is actually talking to yourself as you do it. You've got to talk to yourself. Here is an eye, here is an ear, here is an eye. So you've got to really work that to get that left brain really connecting to your drawing and resisting the schematic part of your memory. Okay, here's a little preview of Andy teaching in the class yesterday. It's really important because again, it's all about letting the process dictate the outcome. And so if you kind of cheat with this one, the process is it's not going to work, you know, and you, you're going to end up with a less, you know, dynamic drawing. So the other one with this one is you're only going to look at your subject. You're only going to look at the person in front of you's face. You're not going to look at your drawing, all right? And we're going to do it for five minutes. And in that whole five minutes, not once do I want you to look at your drawing. So maybe, maybe you kind of stand off to the side here. Maybe you draw each other like that so that you can try and get that page out of your peripheral vision. So, because it's going to be tempting to look, alright? But try and treat yourself because I guarantee you at the end of that five minutes, it's much nice, surprises are nice, you know? It's nice to have that surprise you're doing there. So, I'm going to look at Ellen and I'm going to go, I'm just going to find my spot on the page, you know? And I'm not going to worry about, you know, does it disrupt my previous drawing, alright? And I'm just going to find my spot, yeah, alright? Looking at the eye now, now I'm kind of looking at the nose, you can see a little shadow there, now I'm going up, alright, now I might be looking at the ear, now I'm going to look over this side, at the cheek, alright, I can see like, you know, a little bit there, alright, now I'm looking at some lines on the mouth, I'm looking at another shadow, I'm not, you know, I'm not shading, I'm just doing it purely with line, alright, so I'm going to do this for five minutes, and while I'm doing it, you know, alright, I'm looking at this eye here, now I'm looking at this eye, now I'm looking, all right, I can see some earrings there. Now I'm looking back at this eye. But while I'm doing it, I'm not trying to think, all right, where was I when I was on the eye? And, you know, try to, like, use my mind powers to find that same spot. You might draw the eye in five different spots, you know. Again, that's more interesting than just one stagnant eye, right? So, five minutes, same page. You know, maybe you might, maybe if you're, first drawings there, maybe you might start here, so that at some point they're going to overlap. Maybe you'll start straight in the middle. But, number one rule, no looking at your drawing for the whole five minutes. So you, you're going to trust what's in front of you, you're going to use your eyes. Your hands are going to follow, your hands are going to follow and record what your eyes see. So you're really trusting that process of looking. Alright?